She's not running against Donald Trump. And, you know, I think that the people who support me in this enterprise expect that if I'm going to support someone, they are going to be as aggressive and as honest and direct about Donald Trump being unfit for the presidency. So that is former presidential candidate Chris Christie explaining why he has not endorsed Nikki Haley. Christie told CNN it doesn't look good for Haley in her home state of South Carolina ahead of the primary there a little bit later this month. Well, good for us. CNN's John King recently traveled to the state to see how the actual voters are viewing the race. And John King is with us right now. So tell, tell us, this is the big question right. hanging over the Republican Party now. Is there a real pathway for Nikki Haley? Uh, it's almost mission impossible it, it, when you visit the state. You realize just how complete the Trump makeover of the Republican Party is, even in her home state. When I started doing this, Ronald Reagan was president. The keys to success in South Carolina, lower taxes, less government, strong military. Lower taxes, less government, strong military. Uh, Nikki Haley's running in a state now where, yes, she was elected twice as governor, where the main question Republicans ask is, you know, where are you on Trump? Uh, it, it's not about ideology anymore. It's all about Trump. So can she do it? She has to convince a whole lot of people who are now voting for Trump to change their minds. That's hard. She has to convince a whole lot of Democrats, independents, and moderate Republicans who normally don't show up for Republican primaries to come out and vote, because any registered voter can vote in the primary as long as you didn't already vote in the Democratic primary. Um, she really needs a time machine. She needs to go back to a party that I don't think exists anymore. Mm. Let's talk about what you heard when you were on the ground there from voters. Uh, what you hear is uh, Nikki Haley was a good governor. Uh, but and there are some people who some people even people who voted for Trump in the past who say I'm done with this But the main takeaway was uh, we like her, but we love him The South Carolina shoreline is spectacular Island treats ice cream shop a popular stop in Polly's Island <laughs> Just one scoop of moose tracks. That's okay. good Joy Rendulic cashed in her 401k eight years ago to buy the place leaving Pennsylvania behind God brought me here. I tell everybody, he brought me here. Rendulic served her first scoop back in 2016. Nikki Haley was governor then, and Rendulic was impressed. Yes, she was a very good governor. But then and now, Donald Trump is her vote for president. I totally believe that God has assigned him to this position. That is my true belief. Assigned him to be the president of the United States? Yes. And that he'll be president again. So I've been what, saying what, that for a long time. <laughs> what happened in 2020 then? Uh, that was a mess. That was um, some illegal, some improper cheating uh, happening. No judge in any state so or many, federal judge found any evidence. And I think so many people hate Trump that... And that even judges it, appointed by Trump? Even Trump's Supreme Court that rejected them in the end? Three, three of his justices there. Oh, no, I just know that. There was a whole lot of cheating. If it was God's plan for Trump to be president, why would God let that happen? Because right now the, the time happened. Okay, what happened is what happened, but in, and and I believe Trump's coming again. Such Trump is best, no matter what sentiment, is easy to find in South Carolina. A big reason the former president is heavily favored in Haley's home state. He's even more ready now. Mark Sanford is out of politics because he has a very different take on Trump. Sanford was the Republican governor here before Haley. Then he won his old House seat back in 2013. But Sanford lost a Republican primary in 2018 because he criticized Trump's spending and sometimes his tone. I would say, well, I'm for Trump in this area, but I'm against in these different areas. But people didn't want nuance. They want, are you for or against him? Sanford nods in agreement when Haley criticizes Trump for all the chaos and all the deficit spending. Yet, he expects a big Trump win here. That which has traditionally worked in GOP politics isn't so much working these days. I've seen this erosion, you have too. You go from Tea Party, so, sort of pro movement, to Tea Party, to Trump. It, it's metastasized in ever aggressive forms. And what started out is a lot of well meaning Americans saying, look, look we got to do something about politicians doing what they said they were going to do into something much more strident is their religion. I mean, I, I, I don't know how else to explain it. Hartsville is two hours inland from the coast. Billy Pierce, here for 70 years, except for a stint in the Navy, is another piece of the Trump comeback puzzle. The four years he was president, how was your life? Better, definitely better. We didn't have the high inflation, we didn't have the high interest rates. Not an election denier, 
not a fan of the toxic tone. He had just shut up and, you know, got off of Twitter and that kind of stuff. He'd have made a great president. His 2016 and 2020 votes for Trump track his 1992 vote for Ross Perot. I wanted a non-career politician in there that would do, would run it like a company, run this place like a company, like a CEO. Pierce calls himself likely Trump in the primary. The border is his top issue. Shut it down. And on that, he trusts Trump more than Haley. He's going in to fix the things I need him to fix. I have no problem, be honest with you, I have no problem with putting up two rows and mining the other. So if they come in, you tell them it's mine, you put signs out there say it's mine. Like many voters drawn to Trump back in 2016, Craig Thomas wanted to send Washington a message. It was like, all right, like, this is good. Let's blow some things up. Now he's voting for Haley to send his children a message. I don't think there's any sort of crazy you know, conspiracy between the NFL and Taylor Swift and everything else just showing up for a Biden coordination. <laughs> to end, Thomas hopes awkward conversations after his teenage daughter gets home from the stables. How do I look at my daughter, who is a huge Taylor Swift fan, and this guy's just attacking Taylor Swift for just because she's going to support another candidate, right? Um, and other things like that. And so having those conversations you know, with them, it, it, it does matter, and it does you know, matter with who you support. Charleston is rich with revolutionary and Civil War history. It is more affluent, more educated, less Trumpy than most of the state. But there is quite a bit of talk about Trump, um, even here. That's a bad sign, Thomas says, for those like him who want South Carolina to somehow give Haley a win and give the Republican race a new beginning. So you asked at the start, is there any math for Haley? Yes, it's nothing is ever impossible. She has a little more than two weeks to pull this off. But remember, she last ran 10 years ago. It's been a decade since she was on the ballot. Since then, Donald Trump won the 2016 primary, won the 2016 general election there, won the 2020 election there. So he's won three times in South Carolina. So it's as much his state now as it is hers. Can we talk about Nevada sure. and what happened there last night? Uh, so the Haley campaign is trying to say nothing happened because they weren't playing because all the delegates are actually awarded Thursday night in the caucuses, and Trump has that pretty well wired. But it was a chance for her to get this symbolic, see, there are voters who want me, yeah. and she lost uh, to none of these candidates. Uh, that tells you, again, it's the same point, um, that the party is, this is Trump's party now. Uh, and it, this, even though we're eight years into this, it hasn't sunk into some people. They're thinking, oh, something's going to happen that's going to somehow, all these voters are going to say, never mind, we don't want Donald Trump. That's proof right there, even though that's not for delegates. Not a lot of people voted, but enough people went out to say, no, we're not even going to give her a symbolic victory so she can say, look, there are people who want me. Literally none of the above. The, the Perot to Tea Party to Trump through line. I hadn't actually thought through that. Before. Is that like a common? Uh, it's. A, I, I think. I think a former Governor Sanford makes a very important. Point. No, I think it's super as, smart. As, as, as someone who lived through this, it, yeah. this is this is about globalization. This is about where's the North Star? What do I tell my kids to study yeah. in school? Where's my job going? What happened to my town? You know, there used to be a factory here. My grandfather worked there. Then my father worked there, and I thought I was going to work there. This this started in the mid '90s, and because the traditional politicians have not helped people through it, and now you have AI, and then you have the COVID pandemic, mm -hmm. uh, and everything else, they're, they're not getting a north star from the traditional politicians. So people are going outside their boxes. So for anyone who thinks how they get so far outside the box they get to Trump, yeah. I would say to the traditional politicians, look in the mirror, come up with a better way to talk to blue collar Americans who don't make as much money as you do, who don't go to the fancy schools you went to, right. who want some help. Yeah. That's fascinating. I always thought of the, like Newt being the genesis, that uh, era of Republican. No, it, it, I, think, I think he's right. You can it's, trace it. It makes back. a lot of sense. Yeah. John King, we love having yeah. you on, man. Thank you. Thank you.